Okay, we are at uh, chapter 14, uh, sound. I'm going to do sections uh, 14.1 and 14.2 together since they're both pretty short. Uh, let's share the uh, PowerPoint. And uh, you know, let's see, I lost it. Here it is. Okay, uh, we've all had the experience of seeing a lightning bolt and hearing the thunder the related thunder a period of time later and there's uh, the typical uh, calculation is for every five seconds of uh, five seconds delay between the seeing the lightning bolt and hearing the thunder it's about a mile away because the speed of sound and air is about 1100 feet per second uh, so if you um, Count five seconds, that's 5,500 feet. Well, a mile is 5,280 uh, feet. So it's roughly about every five seconds, it's a mile away. So 10 seconds, it's two miles away, um, and so on. Now, we, in, we'll be discussing the speed of sound at like 343 meters per second. We're not going to do feet per second, but just, uh, uh, just kind of as an intro, this. Uh, it's a good thing to know. Uh, every five seconds, a lightning bolt is five miles. I mean, is one mile away. Okay. Now, producing uh, a sound. There's different ways of uh, producing a sound. If you uh, pluck this spring, the uh, string on a guitar, the uh, string will vibrate, and that vibrating sp spring will uh, disturb the air molecules and, and produce a sound. And here is a, an image of a tuning fork. As the tuning fork uh, goes back and forth at a high rate of speed, uh, you'll play with tuning forks on Tuesday's uh, experiment. Uh, the, as it goes out, and it comp compresses the wave. As it comes back, it, there's a low density region. We, so we, we're going between compression and rarefaction, compression and rarefaction, and that repeated uh, compression and rarefaction uh, sets up your sound wave. Now, this is a longitudinal wave. Um, if you recall a transverse wave, uh, the air molecules would travel up and down this way. It, this is a longitudinal wave because the compression and rarefaction is along the, the wavelength. Uh, so that's uh, how we produce sound. I, I'm producing sound by my vocal cords vibrating and disturbing the air molecules in front of my, uh, my mouth and it reaching the microphone um, to, to, for the recording purposes. So now there's different categories of sound waves, um, audible waves, infrasonic waves, and ultrasonic waves. Now, what are those? Audible waves are between, they say, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz or uh, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. I know very few people that can hear down to 20 hertz. Typically, it's around 60 hertz or above. And the same on the upper level is about, I know I myself, I cut off at about uh, 14 kilohertz. I, I don't hear uh, high voices very well. Uh, I probably need to get a hearing aid or something. But, uh, you know, and a lot of people have different ranges. So that's just a general 20 to 20 kilohertz. Um, infrasonic waves are low frequency waves that that uh, uh, even ships will use because long waves uh, travel very well in water, uh, but you can't hear them. Uh, you can feel them. And then ultrasonic waves are way above 20,000 hertz, and you know, certain dogs can hear certain dog whistles that we can't hear because it's it's so high uh, in frequency. Uh, so those are uh, three of the types of waves. Um, most of what we'll deal with is the audible waves. We're going to be dealing with 1,000 uh, to 5,000 hertz. Uh, most of your uh, speech happens in that, uh, that range. OK, now applications of ultrasound. Um, this is a piezoelectric uh, crystal that with electric imp, uh, impulse, it produces a vibration. Um, and that vibration gets translated into, uh, into sound. Um, and 
So as it travels, uh, as it travels, you have an, uh, uh, the, the wave traveling through material, and when it hits a second material, um, it gets a reflected a reflection back, and the the, uh, the what do they call it? The the uh, uh, the reflected wave is given by uh, pi minus pt divided by pi plus pt squared times one hundred. Now they you can see that they use it uh, you know, they use it to image. Uh, newborns in the womb, uh, and then they they talk about different uh, different um, uses for it. They 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 use it to uh, break up uh, kidney stones and uh, different uh, you know ultrasonic ranging that units. They they use it in cameras to tell the distance, and we used to use it quite a bit at at at. Uh, Southwest Research Institute, and I'll give you an example. Um, let me switch uh, share. The share would be um, here on my iPad. And let's see, it usually takes a while. So the, if you imagine that this is a piece of concrete, and the concrete has all sorts of little aggregate, you know, it has rocks in it. So you're going to get reflections from all of these. And what we would use these to uh, look at old bridge, bridge sections. You know, you go underneath an, uh, an old bridge section and you're looking for the, for, the, for the rebar. So you might be under the bridge and you place a little transducer and you're, you're, you're sending out waves and you're looking for the reflected wave back. And you say, okay, yes, that, that rebar is still, still good. And, you know, you can even uh, see a secondary ref reflection coming off another another rebar and so we would we would look and make sure that okay there's rebar in the concrete and it's still a you know a sturdy rebar but then we could also look at the end the end points where you put a, a transducer here at the end and if you got a reflection that was sooner than you expected no would you expect the reflection to go all the way down the rebar and come back uh, if you got one that was sooner, you would say, okay, there may be a crack in the rebar. And the same, by the same token, if you had a, um, uh, knowing the thickness, you know when to expect the, the wave to come back. If you were to send a wave and it came back quicker, you know, okay, there may be a crack in the, in the concrete. And so we need to inspect. Uh, this is all part of what it, we called, uh, 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 NDT, non-destructive testing, where there is destructive testing where you can go in with a jackhammer and, and look for cracks in the, in the concrete, but guess what? You're going to be making cracks, so that's destructive testing. You don't want to do that. I mean, you can do that after a, maybe a, a bridge collapses and you're looking to see where the cracks were, but if you want the bridge to stay put, you use non-destructive testing techniques. Um, okay, let's go back to the um, uh, to the uh, PowerPoint um, and let's see where are we and that's that's it for for these two sections uh, next we're going to do 14.3 the speed of sound 